Work in my lab is focused on understanding how chromatin repressors work. We do this by using human cultured cells. The DNA in our nuclei is wrapped around proteins called histones to form nucleosomes. And then nucleosomes themselves are packaged further into what is known as chromatin. Chromatin can be very broadly divided into two types. The majority of the nucleus is occupied by euchromatin. This has an open structure and so genes found in euchromatin are normally turned on. Around the nuclear periphery is heterochromatin, which tends to have a closed and compact structure, and so genes found in heterochromatin tend to be turned off. The chromatin environment is hugely important during development when different cell types are made. This is achieved through different sets of genes being turned off or turned on. The genes that mediate this process encode proteins called chromatin modifiers. Understanding how chromatin repressors work is particularly important because mutations in repressors are frequently found in diseases such as cancer and neurodevelopmental disorders. To study the mechanism of how chromatin repressors work, we use a gene called GFP, which stands for green fluorescent protein. If we insert this into euchromatin, the cell will be bright green. If we insert this into a heterochromatic environment, the gene becomes repressed, and so the cells will be dim or will not express any GFP at all. We can then isolate the cells that are GFP dim and use powerful technologies such as CRISPR genetic screens to identify which genes are responsible for this repression. One of the first iterations of these screens that I performed identified a new repressor complex called HUSH, it's important during development, during HIV infection and in cancer. Most recently, we've developed a technique called TRACE, which allows the generation of GFP cell lines analogous to the one we had for HUSH, but for other chromatin modifiers of interest. Our long-term goal is that ultimately we would have a GFP cell line that reports on every chromatin modifier in the cell, and we can then use the rich genetic toolkit that we have available to us to find out how these proteins work in healthy cells and how this changes during disease.